so let's start with the first one. Uh, we will start uh, using Strubing Steel to show some of the new features, remembering that uh, almost all the tools that we have at Site Connect they are also inside of uh, Strubing Steel. So when we access this option here, the connection editor, uh, actually we are working with Site Connect inside of Strubing Steel. Okay, so it's why we have here different um, features that are common to both softwares. Okay, so the first the first one that we have here, maybe it's one of the most uh, important new features of this version. Actually, we can see this uh, this new option is this new feature here in the in the image of uh, that that illustrate our event is the option to um, now model um, built up uh, sections okay built up sections so now we can create uh, not just rolled sections or uh, we can also create this built up sections they can they can be uh, um, constant depth sections or also variable uh, depth sections like this blue section that you, you can see here or also this green one that we can see in the beams here so now you can do that there are different ways to do it okay so we, if we are talking about strubing steel, now we can create these sections uh, here, okay? When we model a new section, here in the list of sections that we have, now we also have not just the rollet, the code format, and the tubular sections, but also the built up sections with rollet steel plates, okay? When we select it, here we can select the type of uh, section. So we have here double T or I, we have C's, we have a squared, we have T's, inverted T's. And then we select the material to this plates, you know, the plates that will uh, set the, the, the section and also uh, 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 the, the geometry of this section according to the previous sections that we uh, made before. Okay, so defining here the, the geometry uh, of these sections, okay? The second option that we have to introduce this um, build up sections, it's importing from, from other softwares, okay? So if you, you work with Cypre3D, for example, you probably already know that we can export uh, in a structure develop it or analyze it at Cypre3D to uh, then import it here at Strubing Steel, for example, or to site connect if we are just analyzing the connections, okay? So from this version, now you can also export those structures that have build up sections at Site3D, for example, and then import it here. Actually, this uh, warehouse that you see here, it's that case, okay? So the warehouse was first analyzed at, at Site3D and then they exported to Bing Cyber Center. And here we started a new project at Strubing Steel, imported that structure, and then we keep, uh, keep developing here the connections and the other details here at Strubing Steel, okay? So this is the second way to to, to add a built-up section here in, in, in the programs. So the first one is by modeling, the second one is by importing. And then when we are talking about Site Connect, let me jump here from Strubing Steel to Site Connect. Here at Site Connect, we can also import uh, the, the structure, but here we can also create uh, isolated nodes, okay? So when I create a, a node that I want to analyze this node, a singular node, I add a name to this node, and then here I can add bars to this node, okay? So now these bars, for example, let's imagine here I have a bar that I will call B1. I can also now select um, also here build up sections with rolled steel plates, okay? So this B1, for example, let's create a, a single, let's create a simple node here, the B1, okay? Let's create, for example, a bin and a column. So I will add the B1, let's duplicate it here, let's add a C1, that's gonna be the column, for example. And the C1, I will apply here uh, an angle, for example, let's add a 90 degrees angle, just to simulate that is a node of a, a bin reaching a column, for example. Actually, um, by default, we have this uh, rolled steel, uh, this, sorry, this build up uh, sections that have constant depth, but we can, we can change these parameters. So let's start changing the B1, for example. 
So here in DB1, we can select uh, between constant and uh, variable depth sections, okay? We can also define, define here the material of this, this, this section, and also we can set uh, a specific geometry for that, okay? For example, like this. But when this is constant, but when we can select variable, you see now that we have here more options because actually here we have the initial depth and the final depth of this element, okay? If I come back to the other one, you see that these options are not available because it's constant, but when it's variable, we have these extra uh, parameters. And to understand what is that, the H1, H2, and length, or L, we have this option here to have an idea to how, how we add this information. So in this case, although we are creating a node, uh, actually, these dimensions, they are related to the, the beam or the column, the, the bar, the complete bar, okay? So the, the length, it's going to be the length of the bar, the, the, the height of the, the section, the initial, the initial part or the initial depth, it's going to be this one, for example, the, 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 the depth near the, the node, and the H2, it's going to be the opposite um, depth, okay? So let's imagine, for example, this beam, it's going to be a beam that is uh, with like like four meters length, so 4,000 millimeters. It's going to start with uh, 400 millimeters high, and then it's going to finish with like 25 centimeters, so 250 millimeters. So as you can see here, there is a variation here. We can see that the the the, the just the, a small part of the, the section here, but uh, it's according to the dimensions of the, the, the beam, okay? We can also add, for example, here an angle. For example, I think if we change this parameter here, like adding 15 degrees, maybe that's too much, like 10 degrees, we can create this situation, okay? The same thing we can do, for example, with C1, okay? C1 is constant, but could be variable. We can now just change here. It's gonna be like a three meters high column, that starts with uh, also 400 and finish with 300, for example. And then here we have here these built up sections, in this case, with variable depth, okay? So this is the third way that we have to add this kind of sections to our projects, okay? The first one, as I said before, we can model it when we are working here at Strubing Steel. The second one is by importing the structures from Cyp 3 d And the third one is by creating um, isolated nodes here at Cyp Connect. okay? When we accept it, the node will be included here in the list, okay? Uh, and now we must, of course, add all the elements to design the connection of this node, no? So here we just created the node. Uh, we must then add all the, 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 the plates, the bolts, and then also the, the forces and combinations to then analyze this connection, okay? Yeah, so the, the, the first, uh, the first uh, feature that we have is this one to create, to, uh, to now, now also introduce built up sections. One thing that is cool here is that we can also, let me come back here to the editor. We can also, we can also create continuous elements here. Actually, this is not the case. It's, uh, it's something um, not too common, but here we can add this continuous bar. So if I select the C1 and define that it's continuous, we will have this situation here, okay? So you can also do that by um, defining this, uh, this option here. So if I select C1 and, and press here, the C1 is gonna be continuous. If I select the B1 and select here, it's gonna be this situation here, okay? In some cases, we have that, that situation. And just to show you another uh, example, uh, let me come back here to, to, to Strubing Steel. Uh, this is this corner, let's say, the connection between colon and beam, but could be also something like this, two beams, two beams with uh, uh, build up sections that are variable. So this is one situation, this is another, and here we have a connection, okay? So no problem, you can also do this kind of stuff uh, by modeling this, these connections, okay? Let's open one of these connections just to see the operations, just to have an idea how it works and see some results. So for example, here, um, 
let me edit this connection here that is already created. Let me show you how this connection was modeled. So here we have different uh, operations that you can see the list of operations here. Okay, it's a huge list of operations. This is there are a lot of details, some uh, stiffen areas we have here, actually other beings that are uh, connecting here. We have different plates with different boats, okay? Um, and just to have an idea how it was uh, before the, the parameters or the operations were set, let me unselect all the operations to see the raw node, so without any operations. This is the information that came from Cypt3D or was manually uh, modeled, okay? Uh, and we see, of, of course, here that there are a lot of problems, clashes, because the, the connection was in this first state. And then by adding different planes, different adjustments, uh, the, the, the connection was constructed, was modeled, okay? Something that is very nice here, when we add a built-up uh, section that is different from the from the other sections is the possibility to adjust the 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 different plates that that are part of this section we can add different adjustments according to each plate let me show you one example for example the the, the first thing that we created here when we start modeling was to create a reference plane okay this reference plane was this one so it was added using this operation here reference plan and then we uh, add one plate okay one plate one plate that was located in this plan exactly in, on this plan okay the plate one with some properties here some geometry materials etc then we started creating some adjustments using the options to adjust bars that that was for example this one here the adjustment one this adjustment one was necessary look the difference we had this situation and then this situation was necessary to adjust the v1 bar that is this one to the plate okay so i can see that is an adjustment of a a, a bar that is the bar v1 all the plates of the v1 so bottom and uh, bottom and, and top flanges and also the web of v1 they will be adjusted to the plate plate 1b that is this plate here okay plate 1b but then we have a second situation a second situation that is the adjustment number two okay the adjustment number two it was just to adjust the web of the v2 that is also a built up a built up section okay to the plate so here we selected just the web of v2 to the plate 1a so we can see that is like a cut like a, a linear cut here exactly on the plate but this cut is just applied to the web of v2 you can see here the bottom and the top flange of v2 they are not adjusted to the plate one just the v2 look at the difference here in the v1 it was all the plates of the v1 in the v2 it was just the web okay then we keep in we keep uh, adding more more operations for example we we introduce a new plate a plate that would be here okay so yeah a plate with a geometry a position and then the next next step would be adjust the remaining parts of this v2 to this plate for example so for example the adjustment uh, v2 if i activate it now i can see that is again the web of v2 but in this case adjusted to a plate that is the plate 2 okay that is the plate 2 what is the idea here the idea is you can now add different adjustments to different parts of your uh, section if it's a built-up section, okay? In some cases, it's gonna be easier to adjust everything or all the plates of this section to something, a plane or a other section or a, a, a plate, or in some times it's gonna be necessary or it's gonna be easier to adjust, create different adjustments to then finish this uh, the geometry of the, the, the section. Okay. As you can see here, V2 is not um, finished yet because we have this little part of the bottom flange. Okay, so yeah, then we can keep doing that, adding in this case welds, adding another plane, adding no, another adjustments until we finish the connection. Okay, I will just activate everything here to come back to the the complete connection with all the stiff 
partners, for example, all the welds, these elements here to these little beans that we have here in the in the top of V2. Okay. And now we have this, this connection. And if we want, we can export it to our library. We can create all the drawings to this uh, this this connection. We also now know how how much we have of each material here, because then we can export the reports, the material reports. And of course, we can jump from the model to the analysis. That maybe it's one of the most important parts, especially if we are talking about Site Connect. If we are talking about strobing steel. Uh, you can also design, of course, but sometimes uh, when we talk up just about Site Connect, uh, the main uh, purpose of the software is analyze the connection. Okay, uh, here, for example, if I click on stress string, it, it will be analyzed. Um, I have here some loads that were introduced before, and then we can see the the results of the stress string. We can see also we can analyze the uh, the rotational stiffness we can analyze local buckling okay there are different uh, options remembering that in this case we are all using the open seas engine okay a very powerful uh, um, engine that is developed by the university of california um, and and in this moment the the engine is analyzing this connection okay here you can see the, the results, okay? There are different results. For example, the first one that we see is this graphical representation, this color, no, each element is classified based in, a, in the maximum demand capacity ratio of the element. So for example, we can see that these welds here that are in the red color, they are not safe, okay? Uh, because they are more than 100% of the, the demand capacity radio. And we can see that, for example, the the displays or this um, these bars they are in green, so they have between zero and twenty percent of their demand capacity radio, and it's okay. Okay. Of course, if we have one element that is not safe, the, all the connection, everything is not safe. So we must do something to re, to solve this problem. And here we can see that some checks have not been verified. Okay. Of course, here we can see all the results according to the code that we've selected. In this case, I selected the, the American code, okay? Uh, here we can see the maximum uh, plastic deformation uh, that is in this case, the limit for this element is 5%. We have just 0.35. So in this parameter is check this plate that was selected, but we have uh, more, more cases here. So this is another part of the bottom flange of V1 the web of uh, uh, also v1 the web of v2 and if we select here we can see just those elements that are not okay so we have see here we have uh, in some cases uh, some welds that don't have the the correct size or here we have some the the, the string of some fillet welds that are not that, that are not enough okay so it's gonna be easier to change the parameters when we know just the fail checks.